Back in my prime gaming days, I was a bit of a connoisseur when it came to MMOs. Starting out with Guild Wars and then moving on to Star Wars Galaxies, playing through Tor, ESO, even Dynasty Warriors Online. However, over the years, these games became more and more formulaic, but worst of all, they started to move away from what actually made MMOs, you know, an MMO. And because of this, I began to fall out of love with the genre. However, there's a game that's recently arrived in the West that has rekindled my passion for MMOs and also has become my latest obsession. So I'm about to tell you why you should be playing Sword of Legends online. The first thing that really caught my eye with this game was the aesthetic. Ever since my childhood of watching badly dubbed Chinese action movies and my discovery of Dynasty Warriors, I've absolutely loved the look of ancient China in general. But what I particularly liked about it was the fact that the outfits actually looked realistic. For some reason, most MMOs have just decided that higher tier gear should just be ridiculously giant with weird greebles and s giant spikes everywhere. <laughs> I mean, realistically, these armors would be terrible. Like, you'd be crushed under the weight of them, and even if you could stand up, you would not be able to really move at all. By the way, for all the people who seem to think that medieval armor was impossible to move in, just look up literally any of the videos of people doing, like, backflips and cartwheels in these things, and running at, like, full speed. These guys were incredibly maneuverable in plate armor. Also, I love how the robes just flap in the wind realistically when you're hopping about. Oh, it just looks superb. But what really got me to purchase this was the combat, which was a bit of a surprise because in general, every MMO has the worst combat of all time. I know as an MMO fan, that's kind of blasphemous to say, but I'm convinced that anybody who likes this is just suffering from MMO Stockholm Syndrome. With that said though, even though this game does utilize skill slots, it does it in a way that feels a lot more engaging than most MMOs. For myself, I especially am enjoying the Spearmaster class because it feels a lot more like a Dynasty Warriors game. It feels a lot more action and movement oriented, which is something that I really enjoy. However, every single class does feel pretty unique. The Reaper is all about stealth. The Bard is all about playing music, which is really cool. Honestly, <laughs> right now there's a lot of people really pissed off because that class seems to be a little bit overpowered. However, if you do like the more traditional kind of MMO style combat, then the Berserker or the sword artist might be for you. Now, if you hate skill slots completely, you're probably not gonna like this, but if they're not really a big deal and you can manage them like myself, then you're really gonna have some enjoyment with this combat. Also, the enemies will just ragdoll over the place when you kill them, which is hilarious. Now, one thing that does fall a little bit flat in this game is that the story is not really that exciting. There is stuff going on and there is stuff to get interested in, especially if you're a fan of this series. Sword of Legends Online is actually based off the Gujian series, which is a very popular Chinese video game. There's even a TV show. And I imagine if you know a lot more about this world, then the story will feel a lot more investing. However, the big thing that really holds it back is the English voiceover, which is really terrible. Person that could help you before Gui Mei and past Wu Wang. In some ways, it can be pretty funny, and if you do enjoy bad voiceovers, you are definitely gonna enjoy this one because literally every character either does not fit them at all. For example, you got like a child who sounds like a granny, and not because she's supposed to be a granny, but just because they probably didn't tell the person what character they were actually playing. <laughs> who are your parents? My father is Ming Yun Chen, the Grand Summoner of Heavenly Ridge. You rescued me, he will thank you. Ming Yun Chen. However, if that's something that really bothers you, you can actually change the language settings to the traditional Cantonese. At least I, I think it's Cantonese. I don't really know what this says. And that does sound a lot better, and the voices generally do fit the characters they're trying to play for the most part. I mean, I'm no expert because I don't understand anything that they're saying, so I couldn't tell you if, like, they really nailed it. But at the very least, it's not going to completely ruin your, your imagination for some of these characters. For example, one of the main villains, his English voice actor, is, is not... Like, I don't mean to be mean, but it's not good. So it's really hard to kind of feel the emotion that you're supposed to be getting from this guy because it's so bad. And I'm not even going to play it for you because if you're somebody who does not want 
the whole experience ruined in that way, I don't want to ruin it for you. If you want to ruin it yourself, you can go look it up <laughs> on the internet or you can play this game and just see how ridiculous it is. Now, with that all said, the reality is, is that the story itself isn't really the most interesting part of this. When it comes to games like Elder Scrolls Online and Swator, the story is so good that everything else just kind of feels like who cares. But with this game, you can tell that they really focused more on the end game content and less on the grind to get there, which does mean that the level grind is a little bit boring, but it's actually not really that long. You could probably get there in a day if you really tried hard enough. Once again, kind of reminds me of Guild Wars in that sense, where the leveling itself was really more of a formality just to kind of get you introduced to the game. And then once you have a grasp of it, they say, okay, enough of this shit. Now it's time for the real game. And when I made my Swator and ESO video, there was still a lot of people confused about what the problems were that I had with that game. Assuming that the one I didn't like was that it was multiplayer, but that was actually the exact opposite of what I was trying to convey. The real problem is that the multiplayer is secondary. It didn't really matter. If you took either of those games and just stripped them down and made them exclusively a single player experience with optional co-op and PVP, they would essentially be the exact same. And I know this because that is exactly what Swator did and in many ways was improved because of it. But that is a major problem because that's not what MMOs are supposed to be. If your game is made better by the removal of other players, you have ultimately failed. Now, Guild Wars, for example, does actually take that approach. For most of the early levels of the game, it's really just single player with co-op if you want it. But where that game succeeds and the others failed is how they introduce that multiplayer. As the game progresses and you start to know what you're doing, the multiplayer stops becoming an option and instead becomes mandatory. Now, if you want to continue your story and get cooler gear, you have to play with other people. And because you're forced to do that, there's actually less pressure on somebody who's new to the game and doesn't really know what they're doing because the other players aren't really expecting you to. If you're playing a mission where you know there's going to be new players joining you, you're less likely to be pissed off if they underperform because you know that they have to get there and this is their practice moment. Now, obviously, there's always going to be people who are complete dicks and just expect everybody to know what they're doing, but at least in that situation, it's a lot easier just to tell them to fuck off. <laughs> However, in games like Swator and ESO, there's never really that moment. Anytime multiplayer is introduced to you, it's always presented as an option, a side quest that you don't really need to do if you don't want to. And that means that by the time you finish the game and you get to the end content, where suddenly the PvP and the raids are opened up, you are never really introduced that outside of a single player experience. And now suddenly the game has changed completely and you're just expected to know what you're doing without really ever having having an opportunity to learn. But it's clear that the developers of this game knew that what really matters most is the end game content and all the stuff you can do. You have the obvious co-op instances, you have PVP, an incredibly complex housing system, mini games, a card game, fishing if you're into that, the zither if you like making music, treasure hunting, and obviously collecting outfits. The PVP, by the way, I actually really enjoyed. Generally, I don't find PVP in MMOs to be that interesting. But in this case, especially the 3v3 matches, it's quick. There's not so much going on that my ADHD brain is like gonna explode. <laughs> Outside of just the usual kind of 3v3 matches, they also have world PvP where you can join a faction and then go fight other people that you come across the way. However, I'm not as big of a fan of this. I know there are probably a lot of people who really enjoy this kind of stuff. For me, if I'm just going to do a quest, I don't feel like suddenly having to fight some random dude. Fortunately though, you can turn it off. However, if you do like that, then you'll definitely enjoy this because A, you you get benefits for doing it, but also if you do it too much, then you'll get a bounty on your head and you can even hunt other players who are being a little bit too, you know, aggressive, which is something that I think is cool. It kind of reminds me of the Star Wars Galaxy system, where as a bounty hunter, you can pick up bounties and hunt down other players and get rewarded for it. But there is one big problem that I have with world PvP, and that's that the factions aren't really balanced, mainly because <laughs> there are two separate factions and one is significantly cooler than the other. <laughs> you could either join the faction that has a big burr or you can join the faction where you get a giant dragon robot. Hmm, oh man, which, what do I want? A, a fucking bird or a robot? I don't know, so hard to choose. Which, by the way, means that obviously the cool dragon robot faction has way more people in it. Now, I didn't find it to be really that big of an issue when it comes to specifically doing the PvP quests because there's enough players there that you really don't have to worry too much about that. And also, for whatever reason, it seems like the players on the robot dragon faction are worse 
Now as for the housing system, I think I have to say it's probably one of my favorite that I've played. I really enjoyed the Star Wars Galaxies housing system because pretty much every single thing in that game can be an object you put in your house and you can place it anywhere. And while there are a lot more limitations, for example, most of the stuff you have to craft, you can't just take an object from your inventory and put it on the ground. However, it still basically lets you build up your house in any way you want, almost like The Sims. You can even collect animals from around the world and just kind of plop them in your house. So I got like a little farm going on, which is really awesome. And I'm on top of that, they didn't forget about the fact that this is an MMO when it comes to the housing system, which means your house is accessible to other people without having to specifically search you out. It's kind of similar to how they did it with Lotro. We have certain neighborhoods. You can go visit other people's houses that are in your neighborhood and they can visit yours. But a step further beyond that is there's actually benefits to visiting those houses too, because you can help with the gardening. You can get soul force stuff. I don't know if there's anything beyond that. <laughs> now, as for the PVE content, I found that there's a lot of subtle changes in this that just make it a much better experience overall than I have with a lot of other games. Primarily the fact that you don't have to worry about kill stealing or rolling for loot or any of that dumb stuff. You even feel incentivized to actually work with random players who are doing the same quest as you because it means you'll get done twice as fast with none of the downsides. I mean this is the first time in an MMO where I've seen random players seeing you fight a mob of enemies will bring over their enemies that they're fighting so that way you can each share in the kill. And that's the kind of thing that MMOs should be about. It's random people helping each other even though they don't need to. There's one last big thing I should mention, which is this game has no pay to win. It's kind of stupid that that's something we should be congratulating, but, but here we are. It's a one-time purchase to get all the in-game content, the, like the gameplay related stuff. And then there's optional cosmetic microtransactions you can purchase if you really want to. There's some really cool outfits. I haven't seen anything yet that I've really felt like I need to buy. By the way, the premium outfit that I've been wearing in a lot of this footage, I didn't actually purchase. I actually got it as a limited time reward, which was incredibly lucky. The one thing that frustrates me about this is that all these outfits are way too expensive. <laughs> I don't know who it is that's coming up with these numbers, but like 20 bucks for one robe is too much. <laughs> this is like Bethesda prices. It's insane. So if this is something they're into, and like me, you've been looking for an MMO to really sink your teeth into ever since Star Wars Galaxies was killed and Guild Wars became old, <laughs> then I recommend checking out Sword of Legends Online. I imagine a lot of you have not heard about this game because there was literally zero marketing for it. For some reason, the game developers are just going off the idea that people will do word of mouth, which I guess is what I'm doing right now, but that's, that's obviously a bad choice. <laughs> and with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. My oldest brother is Mao Hao. He's the boss. Who here dares to disobey him?